In this video, I want to talk about having a broken heart because of a breakup and what to do about it. Is there a way to feel better quickly? How do you get over a heartbreak as quickly as possible? We can have our heart broken when there's a sudden loss of interest. So, for example, when someone we truly love wakes up one day and decides to no longer have feelings for us for reasons that will probably make no sense whatsoever. How do you deal with that broken heart then? And most importantly, is there a way to refrain from doing things that you will regret later on? Because I'm sure you have noticed, breakups and broken hearts can be really tricky. So that's what this video is about. A lot of the things we do when someone breaks up with us make everything worse. So the question is, why do we do them then? It's because at that moment we have so many raw and very conflicting emotions that we have no clear vision. We have no idea what's really best for us. So in this video I'm going to share a very important question that you can ask yourself that will guide you whenever you feel heartache because of a breakup. I'm an author. I write books about dating and relationships and other topics. My real name is Heer. My much easier to pronounce pen name is Brian Knox. And I think that breakups, although really painful, are interesting as well. They can teach us a lot. I get contacted daily by women who ask me things like, my guy broke up with me, so how can I get him back? Tell me how to get my ex back. Other women ask me, I don't want my ex back, but how do I move on from here? Because I keep thinking about him all the time. How do I find that closure? How do I really move on? Now, before we even consider whether it's a good idea to get back together, we need to look at that heartache itself. Because that pain, that hurt, may force you to do things that you will regret later on. Things that push him away, things that make you lose your self-respect or your confidence. And that heartache probably started when he said, we need to talk. And sadly, when this sentence is used, it's not to talk about the weather or the pros and cons of becoming a vegan or whatever happened on your favorite TV show last night. No, <laughs> it's going to be a talk about the apocalypse, about the end of all things. That's what it feels like, right? After that talk, your mind may be convinced that your life will never ever be the same again. It's the end of the future as you knew it. In as little as a couple of sentences, everything is and feels totally different and very uncertain. And you also start to realize that you may have made a huge mistake. Because the guy you love so much clearly isn't who you thought he was. So that's painful. But most of the pain that we feel after a breakup is fear. That's what it is. It's fear. It's fear of that uncertain future that we are suddenly presented with, totally against our will, of course. It's fear of that emptiness that the ex has now created. We have no idea what the next couple of weeks and months are going to look like. And some people then say, I know what to do. Time heals all wounds, so I've heard, so I just need to kill time. I'm going to binge watch TV with an ice cream buffet. I'm going to visit my friends 24-7. I'll just stay busy all the time. Because when I'm alone, yeah, that's when I start to think. That's when I'm confronted with the hurt and the pain and the loneliness. So that's what I want to avoid. Plus, thinking is overrated anyway. Okay, but that's not really a solution, of course, because after a breakup, when there's heartache, we need to take a step back. We need time to think. We need to do some homework and we can't skip this step. The sooner we do this homework, the better, the quicker we can move on and the quicker you will find that closure that you may be looking for. And that's because pain often tries to teach us a lesson. That's why we feel it. It's our body's way of telling us that there may be a lesson to be learned here. So if we choose to, every breakup can teach us a lot. It can teach us about ourselves and what we need to work on. It can teach us about relationships and how we behave in them. It can teach us about the way we select a partner. Maybe that's the area that needs to improve. Breakups can be a good thing. We can become a stronger, a more empowered and a better version of ourselves thanks to a breakup. You can turn a heartache into a positive energy, but we must be mindful. Because if you follow the mind games and if you don't know me, a mind game is when our mind is absolutely convinced that something is a fantastic idea when in reality it really isn't. If we follow those mind games, then we will do things that we will regret. Famous examples are 
stalking an ex. So not letting them go, not giving them space, even though that's what they clearly asked for, or trying to convince them that they are totally wrong about us, that we want them back. Trying to convince them that we have made mistakes, but that we have learned our lesson. If only they could please get back together with us so we can finally prove it to them. Or checking our phone a hundred times a minute, or my favorite one, sending them a message and then anxiously awaiting the oh, they've seen it moment, often followed by the oh, they've seen it for a very long time now, so why am I not getting a response? I, I should not have sent anything. Yeah, I knew it. I should not have sent anything. Uh, I, I'll, I'll send something else right now. I need to send another message as a follower because clearly I can't leave it at this, right? Of course you can. This is the perfect example of a mind game. We double down on the same mistake and we keep repeating it. It makes no sense. That's why I call these things a mind game. But none of these are a good idea because instead of convincing the ex that they made the wrong decision when they broke up with us, what we are doing is proving that breaking up was definitely the right choice. But most importantly, these behaviors are not good for us personally. They destroy our self-respect, they destroy our self-love, they lower our standards, and they will increase the heartache. Plus, if a woman gets back together with her ex and she hasn't learned a lesson, he hasn't learned a lesson, if they get back together, then the relationship will fail again. There will be another breakup, and probably for the very same reasons. But it's that heartache. It's that pain that makes us do these stupid, silly things. So rule number one is to become aware of all of this. Here's a solution. For every action that's related to the breakup, take a step back and ask yourself the following question. Am I doing what I'm about to do to take away the pain? To not feel the pain that the breakup has caused? And if the honest answer is yes, then it's not a good idea. This is probably something that you will regret in the future and that will prolong or even increase the heartache. The second question, a very important one. Am I doing this to replenish my self-respect, my self-love? Am I doing this to move on, to learn, to grow, to get back to who I really am? And if the answer is yes, then it's probably something that you will never regret. Plus, and this is a bonus, this action will probably help you to get over the heartache much sooner. So these things here, question number two, they actually reduce the pain, even though that was not the primary goal. And I think that's the moral of the story here. By feeling the pain, by allowing it, by taking it on, by not trying to numb it, by choosing to grow, the heartache can pass much quicker because you will be introducing good things into your life instead of bad things like, for example, alcohol, binge-watching TV, one-night stands, things that may seem like a good idea at that moment, but that will probably only prolong the pain. And you know what's interesting? When you build yourself back up, when you grow, you have a much higher chance of starting an improved, a loving relationship with your ex or with a great new guy who's actually worthy of your attention. When you do this type of homework, you win either way. Because, and this is important, whether you want to get back together with an ex or whether you want to move on, you will always have to leave the old relationship behind because that relationship was broken. And if you're currently not going through a breakup, then all of this may sound super simple, probably very obvious. But remember, at that moment, you are in the midst of mind games. Your emotions are conflicting or very raw. It's very hard to really know what's best for you at that moment. As we have seen, that hurt makes us do silly things. Your mind will probably have turned your ex into the most important person in the universe can be the most loved person or the most hated person, either way still the most important person, when he should be about as important as an empty roll of toilet paper. So ask yourself the questions I've mentioned in this video and try to let them be your guide. Try to not follow your instincts because after a breakup, they are wrong more often than not. And if you ever need more help with this, then I have a couple of additional podcasts and videos with additional strategies, tips and techniques that you can use. If you want access to those, then I'll put a special link in the description underneath this video, or you can go to brokenheartfix.com. 
I got a lot more strategies over there for you if you ever need them. I want to thank you for watching this video until the end. As always, I really appreciate that and I hope that you found some value in this video and that if you are ever going through a breakup, that all of this will come in handy. So thank you for watching and see you in another video.